Welcome back everyone, hope you're doing well. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and turn that bell notification on. My name's Shaw Gonsalves from Animation Deconstructed. We're gonna jump straight into the video. In this first video, we're going to be setting up the text animation very quickly and then moving on to creating those cube animations that you've seen in the demo. So I've just got a basic scene set up here with a background layer and I've spotted a blue color, then just two text layers with no animation on them. And I'm just going to quickly create this text animation that we've seen in the video in the beginning. And we will then move on to creating the motion graphics behind the scenes. Let's move this to the top. I'm going to press U twice go to the animate, select position, and then select the add. You don't want to select the animate drop down again. Let's just add another property and we want the opacity. I'm going to move this down. So let's choose about 130 and also take the opacity down. And it's pretty easy to animate this. We just need to keyframe the range selector, move over, let's say around here and just animate this to 100. Select both keyframes, press the F9 key, and let's actually move this into about 24. I'm going to do the same for the graphics text. Press U twice, add the position and add the property for the opacity as well. I'm going to move this down, say about 50. Take the opacity down. Let's start this at frame 10. Drop down the range selector, keyframe the start, move over to about one second and three frames and drag up on the start. Select both keyframes, press the F9 key, and let's take a preview. Pretty happy with that. I just want some scaling on this, and the easiest way to do this is create a new null object. Parent both of these to the null object. S for scale, and I'm gonna keyframe this at the end. I think this is the biggest I want my text, and my composition's six seconds long if you wanna follow along. I'm going to make this 90, and just press play. In this first composition, we're going to be creating this block and we'll just place it around and then add the texture to this. So what we need to do is actually create a new composition. I'm going to call this sides. Let's make this pretty big. So 2000 by 2000 and press OK. What I'm going to do is create a block inside this. So I'm going to hold down here, make sure my rectangle tool is selected. Double click and if you don't have a gradient on this, just click on the fill button, change it to linear gradients, press OK. And I'm just going to reposition these. If you don't have black and white, just click over there and change one to white and one to black and press OK. Also want to add a stroke to this. So I've already got one on here and let's keep this to one pixel wide. And this is just gonna give us a slight edge on our box. I'm gonna take the sides and I'm gonna drop it onto a new composition. I'm going to press S, scale this down to 50%, and then make this a 3D layer. Now, because I've made this 50%, the composition was 2000 pixels. So this will now be a 1000 pixel box. So we can move this backwards and forwards and left and right, uh, 500 pixels every time. Hold this front, duplicate, have six and we'll go back top bottom left and right and then i'm also just going to come over to the active camera and drop this down to custom view so we can see what we're doing i'm going to press p for position and move this to minus 500 select the back press p for position and make this 500 i'm going to select the top I'm going to press R for rotation and shift P to add the position. Then I'm going to rotate this minus 90 on the X and move this to 500. Select the bottom, you can actually tool that up. P, shift R, and then we will rotate this again on the X to 90 and just move this down to 1500. And we've just got the left and right to do. So P for position, R for rotation. We're going to rotate on the Y. So make this 90 and then we're going to move this 500. Do the same to the above. E, R. Let's rotate that on the Y to 90 and move this to 1500. I'm going to change my active view to the active camera again. And let's actually create a null. Right click new and null and we'll call this cube controller. Should we make this a 3D layer? Can actually select all these layers and parent it to the controller. I'm going to press R so that we can rotate 
this on the Y minus 45. And then I'm going to rotate this coming towards us over the six seconds. So I'm going to turn the keyframe on for X, move over to six seconds. And let's do this as one revolution. It's some things that we just need to fix is the gradient needs to always be coming from the top and always from the back left so that it looks the same when it rotates to the other side. So I'm going to select the back and the right. So back, I'm going to press R for the rotation. And on the X, I'm just going to say 180. And then the same for the right, X 180. Let's just go through to the back. This will be on our bottom, R. And we can just rotate this on the Z to be minus 90. Now let's just play this through. Let's rename this to cube. In our composition, let's just drag this and drop it into the scene below the text and makes this say about 45. So I'm going to add a tint to this. And if you want to follow the exact colors that I'm going to use, let's uh, spot the background and then 00F892 and press OK. And that's looking pretty good. I am just going to duplicate this and then press the S key for scale, move this over, press R for rotation, and just place these all over. And then also bring up the transparency and bring this down so that we can place a few all over the background. I'm gonna do that and then we'll come back to this in a second. Okay, so we've got four of these. Now I just wanna get some random rotation around this. So the easiest the way I'm gonna do this is just to right click on a layer, go to time, Enable time remapping and then let's move to the end here and add a keyframe and I'll delete the last one. Now if we alt click on the stopwatch we can add a loop out so that is loop with a small L out with a big O and then you want to open the brackets and close the brackets and then just press enter on the numpad and we should get a looping sequence. Now I can copy this, just move to the first keyframe. So we're pasting it in the same place, select the others and paste, deselect everything, press the U key and U again to close everything up. Then I just want to offset these. I'm going to drag back here. And if your layers are not extending past, just extend them by dragging. So you might actually see something like this when you get them, you just want to extend them across. I'm going to carry on just pulling these across here. And then we should have some sort of random rotation on all of these. To add the grain, let's just deselect everything, right click new adjustment layer. And I'm going to in the effects and presets panel type in HLS. And I want to choose this noise HLS or I'm going to double click this. I want some grain. 1% for the hue, lightness 3%. Let's change the size of the grain. So make the smaller 0.5 and then the noise animation speed. This is way too fast and this is going to look like one of those television screens. Let's change that to about five and then just take a preview of this. In this next part of the tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how we can create these kind of graph animations within the background. So I have my next composition open and we've just brought in our text from that other one. I've just changed the color of the background. Let's just take this cube, duplicate it, and let's call this graph, press enter, and I'm going to double click to go into this. Next thing I'm going to do, everything's a bit open, so I'm going to close everything up and we're going to change the size of this cube just by using a null object. So S for scale, let's make this about 35. Five. I'm going to move forward a bit just to get a bit of a tilt over here. I'm going to unlink the scale and then we can just make this a lot taller as well. 173 should be good. Also want to add a camera. So I'll show you why. Because of this perspective, I want to add a 200 millimeter camera, which should be able to straighten this out. Now I'm going to right click, create a camera. And let's just make sure that it's not in custom or anything else. Change that to 200 millimeters and press OK. And you'll see it starts giving us more of an orthographic kind of look. I'm also just going to take off my title safe area so that you can see this a bit better. Press the R key. I'm going to add a keyframe here and then actually delete all the keyframes so that we're just at that rotation. With that done, let's go back to our composition and draft this graph in. I'm going to scale this down, say about something like this. And what I want to do is just animate this moving up and down. So I'm going to press P key for position and then 
move ahead to about one second let's move this up move to two seconds and copy this first frame and paste it select all the keyframes press the f9 key then we're going to alt click on the stopwatch and we're going to do that loop out and brackets again and then this will just move up and down on our scene let's uh, add a tint to this and add our color and this is why i like working in black and white is because i can reuse these assets or just quickly change them if the client brief changes or the corporate colors change as well let's uh, spot the background and then change this one to 6f 4d a6 okay and what i'm going to do is just duplicate these and when you duplicate them press the u button and then select all these keyframes and just move it into place then you can just scale this up and place them all over and then offset these actual position keyframes slightly so that each one will be moving at a different pace i'm just going to do that quickly and i'll see you in a few seconds okay so i've got everything here and i'm just going to move a couple of these over i'll speed this up so that you don't need to watch it and let's take a preview of this Last thing we need to do is just copy over our adjustment layer and paste and our texture will be applied. And I'm pretty happy with that. If you're finding this tutorial helpful, make sure to click that like button. In this last piece of this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to create this new style motion graphic sequence. So with this composition, I've just got a bit of a change to the background uh, just to add some interest. I added a four color gradient. You've seen me do this in my other tutorials, um, but I just have a dark patch here and a dark patch here because I want some shadows on the text. What we want to do is actually create this circular kind of pattern over here, which can go over some of the text and some and make it and really give us that feeling of a 3D kind of feel to our scene. What we need to do is create a new composition, call this uh, circle texture. Let's make this pretty big. So 3000 by 3000, press OK. Right click, new solid. Just gonna make it a white solid, should be good. Press OK, and I'm gonna draw some masks onto this. Something like this, maybe another one here. Holding the space bar, you can actually move these as you drag in. And then just one more over here, something like that. And if you want to move these, just double click and you can move these up and down to whatever you need. Next thing I want to do is add an offset to this. So under the effects and presets, I'm going to type in offset. And then we can turn on the keyframe for shift to center. Press the U button to bring up the keyframes. Move over to say about three to about minus one five hundred. And that should be a loop. So this is moving up. Next thing we can do is just Alt, click on the stopwatch. Let's do that loop out sequence again. Loop out and brackets, enter. And this will just carry on moving all the way through. Can close this up and we want to bring it into our scene. So I'm going to come over to the circle texture and drop it below our text. Let's actually start above our text so we can see what we're doing. Turn this on. We can see it's pretty big. Take the scale down. I made it 3000. So if you're working with a 4K video, it'll still be big enough that it'll look good. With the layer selected, let's search for what is known as CC Sphere. And we'll get this. I'm going to change the radius of this to be pretty big. Let's, um, let's actually take it way bigger. Run about there should be good. I'm just going to see how this looks when we animate it. That's fine. I want to change the color of this. Add a tint and move this above the sphere. So we are first coloring this. Black is fine. Let's change this to a red. So A60303. We can start playing with the sphere rotation. So I want to rotate the Z to let's say about 30. And then I just want to rotate the Y. Let's say about minus 54. Let's see. That's good. And then I'm going to rotate the actual layer so I can get this going the other way. So let's say about minus 81. That should be good. Let's see how this will look over the text. It's pretty good um let's change the light now i'm getting too many shadows on this the light direction i want to change say about minus 17 
drop down the shading and let's bring up the ambient to 45 should be good i'm going to pop these back up drop this below the motion let's move forward so we see that text and the way that we put this word graph inside this is we are going to change the render to the inside and we will drop this below duplicate it and then i'm going to change that to outside and if we play this The last thing we need to do is just copy this adjustment layer, paste it to the top and just take a final preview. If you want to see more tutorials like this, take a look at either of the two videos popping up on screen right now. Keep animating and until next time.